Due to its location on Amsterdam's museum plane, the magnificent Rijksmuseum, also known as the National Museum, has collected unique art and antiques since 1809. It should come as no surprise that the museum's large collection now consists of about 7 million pieces of art, including 5,000 paintings displayed in more than 250 halls and a massive library with around 35,000 volumes. In addition to its one-of-a-kind collection of ancient masters, this magnificent museum provides a thorough account of the evolution of art and culture in the Netherlands. It is particularly abundant in traditional Dutch handicrafts, sculpture from the Middle Ages, and contemporary art. Additionally, you should be prepared to spend the better part of a day or maybe longer discovering this museum's many treasures. As a result, keep watching this video to discover some of the most remarkable hidden treasures that can be found at the magnificent Rijksmuseum. P.S. We were only one of the few visitors to the museum by the time we went there. I was lucky to visit the museum when it was closed. I was only there with my kids and family. Self-portrait. It is only fitting that Vincent van Gogh be included prominently in this video of the Rijksmuseum's titans of Dutch art. As his name implies, Vincent van Gogh was really Dutch, even though we mostly connect him with France, the country in which he lived, painted, and sadly passed away. In addition to being a hero of the modernist movement, this individual had deep links to his own nation. The Dutch masters, particularly Frans Hals, had a significant impact on him and he had a very strong relationship with his brother Theo and other family members. The Rijksmuseum is home to several works by Vincent van Gogh. Nonetheless, the self-portrait is the most prominent piece in Room 1.18. It is perhaps fitting that the Dutch National Museum is displaying a painting of itself created by one of the museum's most renowned sons. It is said that van Gogh used himself as a model to save money, but when you look at this painting, you realize that this explanation does not seem to be adequate. No, this is not a guy staring in the mirror to experiment with different brush strokes. This individual is a guy who is looking for himself. While writing his piece titled Vincent van Gogh's Quest, the same concept struck Juist Mirlo. According to what he has written, van Gogh specifically finds himself searching for his own identity in his self-portraits. Who am I? Is a question that plagues him constantly. We may refer to it as the expression of early suppressed feelings, the internal concept of being incomplete. Not only should you admire the brushstrokes and the brilliant use of color, but you should also look at the guy. Observe Vincent van Gogh, a guy who had a profound feeling of melancholy, a dread of being alone and obscure, a great deal of charity, and a violent sensibility for comedy. Winter landscape with ice skaters. Regarding the Rijksmuseum collection, this particular painting is a favorite mostly because it is a superb compilation of tales in a single piece. Born deaf and mute, Averkamp was a highly regarded artist of his day who was active during a change in Dutch art. A moodier and more monochrome approach was used toward landscapes, which had traditionally been a favored subject in Holland. The horizon was brought down lower over the picture, and the artist experimented with creating frigid winterscapes covered with snow. Even though snow images were somewhat frequent, Averkamp produced something remarkable with this piece. If you stand in front of it for sufficient time, you will find yourself completely submerged in his world. We get death, life, joy, laughter, toil, love, and even some foolishness from Averkamp. Upon first inspection, you see couples skating, some falling and others smiling. There is a striking contrast between the celebrations and the working folks going through the frozen snow. The frozen body of a horse that was devoured by a dog and several birds serves as a reminder to us that life is short and fleeting. In this picture, a great deal of warmth can be seen if you look attentively. Take note of a couple engaging in sexual activity, a toddler racing to his father with his arms extended, ladies engaging in gossip, and men playing a game that seems to be a game of hockey. There are also some humorous moments, such as the guy rudely relieving himself of his burden. It would seem that there is not just one naked bottom on the image's left side, but two of them. While Averkamp was having a moment of vanity or fun, he painted his own name as graffiti on the side of the shed that was located to the right. As we relate the tale of Dutch art across the years, this picture is significant because it tells the story. He demonstrates the gradual transition away from the idealized landscapes of the Flemish school and towards something completely fresh and unique to this era and these particular locations.
He draws us into the landscapes and gives them a human quality. Even though fashion and technology have changed, the work, play, and feelings we experience daily remain as they were in the past. The Milkmaid. Johannes Vermeer is a person that needs little introduction. He and Rembrandt are the monarchs of chiaroscuro and the lords of Dutch painting. When he is at this location with his milkmaid, he can communicate really well. First, let's look at the mathematical aspects of the picture. Vermeer's manipulation of the angles of each item is what draws your attention to the milkmaid and her hands. This is not just because the action occurs in that painting area. Imagine a line traveling down at an angle, beginning at the window, where one of the panes is shattered into two pieces. At that time, every item is arranged in a triangle, with the tip of the triangle centered on the girl's hands. Drawing the eye in is made easier by the use of color and shadow. Vermeer used dots of color to illustrate reflection, which allowed him to depict light and shadow. It is important to take note of the distinction between the natural light that emerges from the shattered glass and the light that is filtered via the window and illuminates the space that has been whitewashed. From that point on, pay close attention to the particulars, such as the nail holes in the wall and the fact that the bread is not new but rather crusty and stale. In addition to the girl's work sleeves being pushed up, there is a little rip in the seam running down her shoulder. On the Delft tile located at her feet, there is a foot warmer and a cupid. Even while everything seems relatively easy, there is still much mystery. The question is, what exactly is this milkmaid doing? All components are there, including crusty bread, milk, and a tankard filled with beer that will be used as a leavening agent. Vermeer's ultimate purpose, on the other hand, appears to be asking, who is she? Her velvety skin, her broad hips, and her firm, steady posture all contribute to the impression that she has a strong moral fortitude. The world has already seen scenarios involving milkmaids in kitchens. Both of these topics were the most popular among Dutch painters. However, Vermeer presented something completely novel and intricate. We are intrigued by her and inclined to be pulled to her. Even if the kitchen is chilly, she exudes warmth. In addition to delivering a promise of maternal protection, she also provides undertones of sensuality. Realistically speaking, the milkmaid transforms into a metaphorical concept, a concept of something that is abstract and universally recognized and revered. In contrast to traditional portrayals of concepts such as honor or fidelity, her attire helps her maintain a modest demeanor. Nonetheless, we are under the impression that she is something or someone really remarkable. In the end, Vermeer's ability to transform the commonplace, the prosaic, and the modest into something exceptional is his greatest act of generosity. The Night Watch In addition to being one of Rembrandt's most well-known and expansive works of art, the Night Watch is the most well-known artwork at the Rijksmuseum. Jansen believes it is a virtuoso performance of Baroque movement and lighting. This work was commissioned by the Municipal Guard of Amsterdam for their headquarters. It is not only a spectacular example of technical mastery, but it also has a captivatingly lyrical quality. Because of his skill as a storyteller, Rembrandt could transmit an unlimited number of layers of subtext inside his paintings. This begins with the action that is shown in the middle of the artwork. The captain has just delivered an order to the lieutenant, but the captain has not yet given orders to his soldiers. At that precise instant, it seems as if we have suddenly entered the scene, capturing everyone during a moment of activity. Men are loading weapons. One of them is even being fired. Youngsters are rushing about. One of them is wearing a helmet that is too large for him. A drummer is practicing his instrument, and the dog is becoming scared of the drum. The picture portrays a noisy and loud appearance. The spectator can sense the movement and virtually anticipate where a hand will rest and where a foot will travel next at any given moment. The execution of the details alone, the splendidly gleaming metal, the shimmering cloth, the various pieces of equipment, and even more so, the fashioning of the eloquent facial expressions, succinct gestures, and dazzling lighting effects are artistic in the highest degree, Michael Bakamul writes in his book on Rembrandt. One would get the impression that all the options inherent in a depictive depiction have been explored. It is a time of discretion for the members of the Municipal Guard. The scenario is a moment frozen on the brink of action, making it extremely enticing to the people watching it. Prior to the lieutenant communicating the command to march, this is the Civic Guard in their capacity as individuals. At that precise time, they will transform into the collective that becomes the Municipal Guard. 
Individualism and anticipation are two elements that are celebrated at this event. This is when we ask ourselves, is it an incredible moment, or is it the expectation of something remarkable? It is important to keep in mind, however, that this is a picture that was commissioned to portray each participant in the guard. Large portions of the panel were removed to move the painting to City Hall, which occurred some years after the work had been finished. Experts strongly suspect that as much as four to five meters of finished canvas vanished. According to the legend, even though there ought to have been a hue and cry over the destruction of this masterpiece, a sufficient number of troops and subjects were dissatisfied with their portrayal, and they did not mind being removed from the painting. However, Captain Franz Benning Koch, the picture's subject, commissioned a replica of the painting. Because this copy still exists, specialists have a vague understanding of what the missing panels looked like. They are now working on a big project that will enable them to duplicate the panels and restore the original. Also, this project will make use of artificial intelligence. One gets taken into a universe that is solely the creation of the artist while they are gazing at the night watch, as is the case with a great number of other pieces of art included in this book. Perhaps the greatest way to put it is in a letter that Vincent van Gogh sent to his brother Theo in 1885. In the letter, he said, Rembrandt goes so deep into the mysterious that he says things for which there are no words in any language. He could make poetry, be a poet, that is to say, creator. The Threatened Swan. The Threatened Swan is a stunning work with power, movement, strength, and fury. It is a magnificent painting from a technical aspect, furiously and protectively, the swan is rising up to guard its egg. The dog's presence in the bottom left corner of the image indicates the imminent danger. As a result of the fact that we see it from a position that is essentially identical to that of the dog, we get the impression that the danger that the swan faces is immediate, pervasive, and may even originate from us, the viewers. In addition to the fact that Asseline's work is noteworthy due to the technical mastery and power of the subject matter, the fact that this swan is an allegory makes it an absolute must-see when you travel to the Rijksmuseum. One of the most significant turning points in the history of the Golden Age is conveyed via the narrative of this book. A closer inspection will reveal labels placed over each topic in the picture. On the other hand, the magnificent swan is known as the Grand Pensionary, the dog is known as Enemy of the State, and the egg is known as Holland. Whoever added these phrases did so many years after the picture was finished, most likely around 1672. No one knows for certain who that person was. According to Simon Schama's outstanding history of the Dutch Golden Age, the political upheaval in the latter part of the 17th century may be explained more clearly. The labels provide light on the most important actors. Both England and France, which launched the war on Holland, are represented by the dog. The Grand Pensionary is Johann de Witt, who stood as the most powerful politician in Holland from 1650 until he was removed from office. France and England both called for war in the year 1672. The House of Orange Nassau, the strong Republican De Witt, and his brother Cornelis were constantly engaged in a vicious struggle for control in Holland. A chain of circumstances culminated in what seemed to be the unavoidable surrender of the Dutch to the French, the English, and a few German powers who were looking for opportunities. Both De Witt and his brother were brutally murdered in the street after being accused of the tragedy. During the cannibalistic behavior of the crowd, their bodies were roasted, which was a gruesome turn of events. A rather peaceful power transfer was then achieved by the House of Orange, which resulted in the installation of William of Orange as a king. This monarch would significantly impact the destiny of all countries involved for many centuries to come. You will come across pictures of members of the House of Orange as you make your way around the Rijksmuseum. Additionally, you will come across a portrait of Cornelis de Witt, created by Jean de Bain. In the same way that all Dutch art seems to be, the swan, taken by those who advocated for the de Witt brothers, serves as a reminder that regardless of how strong we are, we are all mortal. The Rijksmuseum is home to some of the most renowned Dutch art and history masterpieces. Also, the six paintings emphasized in this video are a tribute to the vast collection of the Rijksmuseum. These paintings, in other words, are an absolute must for everyone interested in the art and culture of the Netherlands. Adam Lookout. In Amsterdam, there is a viewing platform located near the central station. Adam Tower, originally known as Shell Tower, is the name of a particular skyscraper. 
It is located at a height of over 100 meters and swings riders back and forth over the side of the tower. In addition to paying the admission fee of 12.5 euros for the observation deck, you will also be required to pay for the swing, which costs 5 euros. After purchasing the ticket, you can snap photographs with a fabricated backdrop. You may get a sneak peek at some of the greatest ideas shared online, and you can either replicate one or develop your own. Once this is complete, you will take an elevator to the top of the tower, taking you to the 21st level in 20 seconds. Look up, because there are a lot of lights in there. Once you have arrived at the observation deck, you will have the opportunity to look at and take in the breathtaking panorama of the city. You can take as many photographs as you want, but remember that there is also an outside portion, which may boast more breathtaking vistas. Additionally, there is a 360-degree panoramic sky bar and restaurant, which is a little pricey, but you may try it for a special occasion if you want to. On to the swing, now. As soon as you put the swing through its paces, it begins to be both terrifying and enjoyable simultaneously. Even though you have safety measures in place before the chairs begin to swing and move up, the sensation that it is a little bit frightening is still there. In other words, take some time in the breathtaking panorama of the nation's capital as the excitement rushes through your blood. To sum everything up, during your trip to Amsterdam, you will have an exciting journey. Because Amsterdam does not provide many opportunities to observe the city from a high vantage point, it is fortunate that you have the opportunity to do so. You also have the opportunity to boast that you have visited the tallest swing in Europe. Alternatively, you might ride the Amsterdam VR ride, a one-of-a-kind virtual reality roller coaster traveling across the city. And that wraps things up. We appreciate you watching this video. Please hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next one.